Welcome to Documentary First, an inside look at a first-time filmmaker's journey. I am your host, Josh Lindsay, from the Movie Proposal Podcast. And with me is our first-time filmmaker, Christian Taylor. Hey, Josh Lindsay. How's it going? Good. Happy to be here. Good, good, good. And with us, as always, is our trusty Dusty research extraordinaire, typing on the keyboard. Note taker. Guy, Jason Rugg. <laughs> hey there. <laughs> I don't know how long I can keep making this thing longer, but <laughs> now it's just Guy. <laughs> yeah, we'll go back to the short version. Yeah, yeah him. He's here. <laughs> that dude over there. Yeah. <laughs> so last we spoke, you were down in Na- or, or near Nashville. Yeah, Mule Town. I was in Columbia, Tennessee. Columbia, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And you were supposed to be there a week or something, and you basically lived there for six weeks? I did. My husband and my son keep saying it's two months. Two months. Mm-hmm. They're rounding up. Fair yes. enough. <laughs> and so, But you eventually came back. I did come back. All I right. did come back. I came back after we had the assembly edit done for the new script. So basically, uh, around the end of February 1st of March, it was like day one, you know. Bill and I were talking about today, because now we're pretty much at the end, and um, we were he, we were laughing because I was listening today to the end of the film, the score at the end of the film, and I was crying like a baby. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so good. That's just the score? Yeah, it was. well, I was watching it and listening to it, but I was reviewing the score, and it was just blew me away and I was like I cannot believe we did this so I was I called Bill I'm like I can't stop crying like this is so good and I, he's like I know I can't believe we've done this in 10 weeks I'm like yeah me either and uh, you know the crazy thing was like I can remember sitting in his office and Bill was like okay where do we start and I was like I don't know. And he's, you know, basically he's like, you're going to have to write this. I'm like, I don't know how to write. I'm not a writer. And I was mad. I was really mad. You know, I just didn't want to write. And I didn't know how. And I doubted all of my abilities. And and now here we are. Here we are. So you have... So you did the assembly edit. Right. And basically, we've talked about that before. That's just taking the script and throwing the building blocks in a timeline. We're editing in Premiere, which we've all decided we hate oh. and will probably <laughs> be going to something else. Um, maybe the new version of Final Cut, I hear, has got some pretty nice features. But anyway, we're editing in Premiere, and um, you know, we get to the end of that, and we're at... Two and a half hours. For the first assembly cut of the film. edit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Two and a half hours. Yeah. This is an epic adventure. Well, what's interesting was we were, when we first started out, and I was at that day of like, what do we do? We were like, okay, look, if we can just get an hour to show at Normandy, we'll be good. Yeah. Let's just let's just put something down. If we can just get an hour, that'll be enough. And so I was like, all right, maybe I can do that. And so when we get six weeks later and we've got two and a half hours, like nobody was more surprised than us. Like, how did that happen? Um, But then we were like, this can't be two hours long. Like we told everybody it was going to be 90 minutes long. We got to shave an hour off of this. And I did not know how in the world. And at that time, I was like, listen, I called my French producers and I'm like, let me tell you something right now. You need to call all of those places that want to do screenings and you need to tell them that this film is two hours because I'll try to make it an hour and a half, but I'm telling you right now, there is no way it is going to be, (laughs) you know, cut by an hour. So talk about the process of, you know, at least going from two and a half to two hours, you know, because you, obviously you put that stuff in originally because you wanted it. So how do you decide Yeah, it was the what director's the- cut. Well, um, we call that killing your babies in this, uh, you know, industry. And it was rough. Like, I got home, I looked at the assembly edit, and I had to start figuring out um, – you know, what worked and what didn't work and be looking at things a little more critically. I threw in everything that I really loved and then I had to figure out, okay, 
you know, I had to be more objective about it. And that involved a process of showing people things and, you know, giving them little bits and pieces, asking for their feedback. Um, I have some consultants, Nicole Bernardi Reyes and Sandy Gordon, who I would, um, you know, check things with, who have been in this business longer than I have. And we'd incorporate their feedback and kind of cut some stuff. And uh, we'd try to figure out how to tighten it up. But it was, you know, like solving a jigsaw puzzle, trying to figure out what to cut and what to keep. Now, in this day and age, you know, when you have – you know, the internet and um, with DVDs, they have the, you know, DVD extras and that kind of stuff. It it would almost seem easier to know that, like, you can remove something, but you can display it somewhere else. I mean, do you have that in the back of your mind as you're doing this? Well, (laughs) Bill is hilarious because Bill's like, okay, Christian, we're going to try this cut. Now, I promise you, I'm going to stick it over here and we're not going to (laughs) lose it, (laughs) you know? And so he like always puts it on reserve. So I know that if I ever have to go back, it's kind of sitting over there, right? Right. But that gives me the ability to let that go because I know it's not permanently lost. And, um, so, you know, we still have that two hours and and a half sitting somewhere. And most people have said, well, I want to see that, you know, because you do. That's why you have the director's cut because yeah, right. there are people that are really into it that are going to be like, I want to see everything. Um, and so what I, what I know is that we will take some of those things that were my favorite and we'll use them for other things, educational tools for schools. You know, we can put them in new museums. We can use them for marketing. So they're not going to be lost. Okay. Yeah. So it would seem like it would help ease the pain. So you know, yeah. maybe you're not killing your babies. You're just moving them to your aunt's house or yes, something. Yes, that's right. right. You know, like, they're going to let somebody else adopt them. That's right. Just yeah. for this summer. Yeah. So. All right, so now you're you're working, you're not in the same, when you come back to Chicago, you're not with Bill anymore. Yeah, and you know, that's really weird because normal film companies work in the same office, you know. It just makes communication faster. You can see things more quickly. It's it's faster to have communications and conversations about things real time instead of like emailing something and waiting for a response. And it just adds to the delay. So... We had to figure out how I was going to be able to review things, and that was an interesting process. Okay, so uh, I imagine you'd have some some tools. Were these were these new to you? Were you familiar with this? Like, yeah, how did you figure this I out? I mean, I was kind of familiar with this. We, uh, but we had a challenge trying to figure out the right tools. And the reason is there are tools out there that exist, but most of them are cost prohibitive for little independents mm. like me. And so we had to. It was a combination of finding tools that really worked and tools that were free. So, um, and we had to use a combination of them. So, uh, to make our virtual teamwork, we used Google Drive, but of course I had to buy extra storage for that. We used a great program called Trello. Have you ever heard of Trello? Yeah, yeah. I love Trello. It's awesome. Um, and then we used, we should probably make show notes and put these in the show notes. Tre- Trello is like a kind of a task manager. Like, I don't could, know how you explain Trello. It's, it's almost like sticky notes. It, 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 <laughs> virtual well, sticky notes. That's a good way. So you it, can track- it is kind of like virtual sticky notes, but basically, so we have ours is laid out this way. You have one big team Trello board, which in my mind is like an office. And then inside the office, you have walls. And on every wall, you have a huge bulletin board. And on every bulletin board, it covers different things. So we have a bulletin board for website. We have a bulletin board for social media. We have a bulletin board for fundraisers. We have a bulletin board for uh, transcription and translation stuff. So every bulletin board then has sticky notes on it. And, and like there are sections like suggestions, um, you know, research, needs ideas, you know, in the process or completed kind of like that. And so for each thing, you make these little sticky notes. But in the sticky notes, it's a whole th- communication system mm-hmm. where you can communicate with your people on that Task and you can upload documents and they can download them and things like that. So you can work collaboratively. So it is like a virtual office in a sense and a repository where you can put all of your files and people can work together. But the fun part is it's kind of like Apple in the, in its design because it's visually pleasing. Right. And so for me, I, we all, our creative team, really like that. You can, you know, you can customize it and make it look fun. So Google Drive, Trello – 
Yeah, and Trello. And then the most important one was um, Frame.io. Frame.io. Yeah. And and there's so Frame.io is one of several tools. Whipster is another one um, that you use for reviewing video. Okay. Um, so when I was in the studio with Bill and I, he's sitting in front of me and he's got this big monitor and two other monitors and he's doing things, if he wants me to review something, he just plays it and I can watch it and I'm sitting there. So um, – Frame.io is a world that I do pay a small fee for, like $25 a month or something like that, um, where Bill will upload a version every time he's edited something, um, and then I would watch it, and I could make comments in it exactly where. So if I'm watching something and I want an edit somewhere, I type in where I want the edit or where I want the change. It makes a little note. And on the side, you can click on that note and go exactly where it is and incorporate the change. Oh. And the great part is Frame.io integrates with um, Premiere. So then it puts all of the comments on his timeline in the software he's editing in. So Premiere is the editing software that you're not a big fan of. Correct. Okay. <laughs> um, it crashes a lot. It's super yeah. buggy. Um, it's good for some things. I mean, Jason, what would you – are you editing in Premiere right now? Yeah. 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 That's what we So tell use. me what your thoughts are on <coughs> Premiere. <laughs> uh, I like Premiere. It's what I initially learned in after Windows Movie Maker was the first thing I ever used. <laughs> and then um, – well, actually, I got Pinnacle video editing, which was awful. So Premiere looked like a great step up for me. Right. Um, it's great for short form content, mm -hmm. but as soon as you get over like a half hour, I just, it gets real buggy and real. Yeah. But for everything we do here, uh, Phil Fisher Enterprises works just fine for us. We don't do anything longer mm -hmm. than, you know, 25 minutes. So I've never had that many issues with it, but right. when, when I do stuff like personally, I've been editing a, a conference and it's just, oh, it's it's a train wreck <laughs> just trying yeah. to go for these hour-long videos. And, and it edit just them. crashes yeah. and there's trouble with, like, color because we really want to color in DaVinci. Yeah. And we, you know, are having trouble with subtitles and just it's kind of clunky. And The new version of DaVinci comes with Frame.io built in. Yeah. It's not a plug-in. It's right. actually just in there. I'm yeah. really excited to try that out. Yeah. So, yeah, so are we. So, um, so yeah, so we, we work that way with um, – with Frame.io. And the interesting thing is, so we've been working in acts. We have four acts. And so we would work on act one exclusively until it was finished. And every time he would give me a new edit with all my new notes incorporated, he would upload another version and it layers the version. So you can always go back and see. Oh. Um, and, and that can be tricky because when you upload a new one, the comments from the old one are lost. So there's some things that Frame.io could do to improve their interface <laughs> a little bit. But um, – you know, if they would only do it my way, <laughs> it'd be great. Um, and then the last one we use, which has been surprisingly useful, is Zoom. Uh, do you oh, use Zoom? That's the – it's like uh, FaceTime or something, right? Yeah, it's really virtual conference calling. Okay. You know, um, you can do video or audio. You can do it on your phone or on your computer or your iPad, whatever. Um, and I do pay, I think, like $12 a month or something like that to have unlimited time. It is a free tool – but you only get an hour a session. Oh. So, um, but I do enough Zoom stuff that I just pay for it monthly. And uh, a lot of times when we were, <laughs> this is what's really funny. When we were trying to edit in French, we had to figure out how to do this with our French producer in France. So at one point, we even – so Bill is sitting at his computer. I'm sitting at my computer behind him. We get another computer, and we set it up looking at his monitor with uh, Zoom so that we could Zoom and she could see the monitor. Anyway, it got to be crazy. When Then we realized, wait a minute. 
Zoom has screen sharing. (laughs) (laughs) So we're making this a lot more complicated. But it was funny at the time. And um, so anyway, Zoom has screen sharing. So we would Zoom with her and we would show her our different edits to make sure that we had gotten them correctly. Um, But what was interesting over time was that we stopped needing her so much because we began to understand the French. Really? And we began to know where to make edits ourselves. It was this weird thing that happened somewhere partway through the six weeks, probably at about the three-week mark. You started speaking French. (laughs) I started understanding French and reading French. Well, très magnifique. (laughs) Yeah, so those are our virtual tools that allowed us to – to pull this thing off. And the phone, telephone and texting, those helped too. Uh, I, we assume that. So, <laughs> All right. Well, hey, that's a good uh, – we'll, we'll end here today, and uh, we'll pick up on our next podcast. We'll talk about the music side, composing, all, you know, working with a composer and so forth. Can't yeah, wait that for that was one. a challenge. <laughs> well, and also I want people to know, you know, we are at the point now where we're about ready to screen this in Normandy and um, – I want everybody to know if they want to see the rough cut and be able to give us some feedback that we can incorporate into our fine edit that we'll do when we get back from Normandy, um, we're letting people see that if they make a donation, you know, uh, starting at the $25 level. We'll take anything else, but but they need to donate $25. That, that's how the internet should operate. If you want to leave a comment, you should have to donate $25. <laughs> Yes. All right. Well, hey, everyone. Thanks for listening. NormandyStories.com. NormandyStories.com. Thank you for listening to Documentary First, where we believe everyone has a story to tell, and you can be the one to tell it. Bye, everybody.